out. He continues to uh, ride his own line, and uh, oh, here he comes. He's up alongside. Oh, and they make contact, and Kodrowski goes down. Mike Kodrowski crashes. Mike LaRocco takes the lead up and continue in second spot. But you can bet there will be fireworks when this one is over. The local boy takes the checkered flag. He lives just across the Indiana border. And Kodrowski right behind him. Oh, and Kodrowski flicks his motorcycle at LaRocco after they cross the finish line. Ooh, you can bet the tempers are flaring. Now the Team Kawasaki guys and the AMA officials jump in between them. I've never seen that before. Kodrowski just stepped. The story uh, on, a, on a tremendously competitive race. Uh, I know he was just waiting for a mistake to be made, but what actually happened from your point of view? Well, I wasn't making no mistakes the whole race, you know, and uh, we were, you know, he was, I knew he was right behind me, and I'd pull a little on him. Then he'd gain back up, and then the last turn, you know, he just came up from behind me and just hit my back end right when I was in the turn and made me just flip right over the bars practically, and then he rode right on the inside of me and took off. And, you know, I mean, we're both teammates and everything, and I try to pass him clean. And if he's going to do that every time we race, then, you know, I'm going to do it right back. But I'll do it on the track. The AMA won't make a decision until they see our tape recordings of the actual incident with LaRocco and Kudrowski out on the track. But Roy Jansen was telling me that what he saw with the naked eye was definitely more than aggressive racing and possible fines might be levied at that time. But, of course, retaliation is always wrong. Kudrowski is uh, his release of emotion will definitely cost him a few bucks. And now Roy Turner's job as crew chief and team manager, he's got to get these two guys ready to go for moto number two.